Hello, and welcome to my second page on my concertina sketchbook. My first page was snake and apple. This time, I kind of wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do. So I started with a fairly simple idea, um, which kind of fits in with the theme. And if you can guess what my theme is going to turn out to be, uh, well, you're not going to win anything, but, well, you'll win the uh, underrated prize of being correct. Uh, but yeah, so there's a little theme emerging that kind of is kind of popular at the moment, so it's not something I would necessarily approve of in myself. I don't seek the popularism. Popularism? Yeah, anyway. But, uh, so this is just the outlines of the beginning bit. So you can see there's a circle and some almost leaf shapes. It's not a tree. I can tell you that much. The problem with this was I did it over a few days, so I took longer about it than I did with the first one. Mainly because, well, just time ran out. So you may see the lighting change slightly and, you know, which always makes it a bit tricky. I've sped it up as much as I possibly can without it being slightly um, motion sickness inducing. I've used quite a variety of uh, media and techniques. Well, not necessarily techniques, but I've used a lot of different media here. Uh, it's mainly drawing. I have used paint, but the paint's more sort of, again, it's more in the tradition of drawing rather than painting. Uh, as you can see there, I'm using Scribblicious. Uh, that's the Scribblicious erasable pencils. So they're quite nice because they're colour pencils, but you can erase them. So you can get some interesting textural effects. I don't think I've used them to their best in this particular video, but I do like the blue because it's a nice shade of blue. And who doesn't like a nice shade of blue? To be fair, blue is not my favourite colour, but uh, when you need it, you need a nice shade. So yeah, so as you can see, they're sort of turning into, from leaf shapes, more into feathers, which, you know, it's kind of appropriate. So you've got here a ring with feathers pointing up, pointing down. Um, we've got blue and we've got red. And uh, you will see eventually that it does actually match, well, not match, but it does go with the theme from the first page. I perhaps, perhaps, I perhaps spent a bit too much time on this penciling when you, and you'll see what I mean when I get towards the end, when, when it gets towards the end of this video. Is that Scribblicious as well on that pencil? It may not be. Oh no, it is, it is. Oh, it's quite a nice shade of red. Um, I've got those Scribblicious pencils. Well, you'll see later on I've actually got the uh, edge of them in the in the actual video. So they're the Scribblicious ones are from the works, but you can get them in other places as well. So this one's a Pentel brush pen, a uh, watercolour brush pen, which was something I, tr I treated myself to. So not the cheapest thing, but uh, well, actually, no, I didn't treat it. I'll be honest with you. Kevin was going through a website and he said, oh, look at these. And I said, well, I don't want to buy too many of them because I, you know, I don't know if they're any good or not, but I would quite like a nice, uh, dark grey, which seems like a weird choice, but uh, it's quite nice to have, rather than have a, a deep black, um, having something that gives you the, that sort of 
darker grey thing so you, you, you've got a bit more room to play with and layer up darkness rather than having it instantly just one colour and you don't hear to it but it's quite a nice little thing and it's, it, they're quite blendable as well or at least this one was um, as you can see that adds quite a nice softness to it also quite I'm quite enjoying using brush pens at the moment just generally um, and if you can get the half decent quality brush pen uh, there's something nice about be having the choice of using the, the thick thin lines that you can get with brush pens so whether you're into modern calligraphy or whether you're just doing drawings and you just want to add a bit of something they're quite nice to use and this page is a bit of a nuisance really because it's got a massive wrinkle in it and it's just one of those things you get sometimes with um, half decent paper is that when it goes through early you get a crumple um, and I think that's why I've put that particular wing on that side because of the imperfection uh, as far as I can tell that's the only imperfection in the whole book as far as the actual manufacturer is concerned which is just one of those things it's like when I was doing the um, the art full box unboxing and when I took the sketch pad out oh, sorry the multimedia pad out and then it all just came unstuck that was about right <laughs> uh, right oh this is um, so this Posca pen and it's a uh, a shade of blue I hadn't seen in the shops before so I got this from uh, Cult Pens uh, they do it, they were doing a it's a three for two offer so I, I must admit I did go a bit mad but you'll see some of the other pens as this video goes on um, so this is a nice sort of slightly greenish blue um, I'm trying to see what which colour it is. It is. It is. If I look at this, this is da, 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 aqua green. Oh, that can't be right. Aqua green. Yes, aqua green. It's weird because I thought it was a nice sky colour, but. Maybe my eyesight's going in my old age. Although I'm not sure colour vision goes. I think next to the very blue blue uh, on the wings, I thought it looked quite nice. You know, it's different but not too different. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is basically me colouring in a bit of sky. Or at least. It's, yeah, I wasn't necessarily intending it to be sky originally, but it was so obviously sky once I was like at least this far through. It was like, yeah, no. Uh, that's the point when I kind of decided to lean into it. The annoying thing, of course, is that this is actually quite a thin one. So this is the uh, Oscar the pin type, that, so the PC1MR. PC1MR, uh, which is basically like a sort of the um, the Posca equivalent of the fine liner, uh, which is great if you want a fine line. But I foolishly wanted to colour the whole bit in this. But when I bought the pens, I wasn't sure what I was going to be using them for, and I thought I'd just be using this one for like highlights and stuff, you know, or just adding details for things. And of course. Of course, I ended up using it for colouring in, which is so annoying. But yeah, so a lot of this particular image is going to be Posca's. Um, mainly because they're just really nice, solid colours. 
although I have used them in I've used them in a couple of places where I've blended in other things and uh, yeah just having fun with it just running with it so part of the inspiration for this well no not the inspiration but part of the direction I'm going to be going in this is to do with my daughter did some research on proper biblical angels not talking like all wings and robes and fluffy bunnies you know not that angels are particularly to do with fluffy bunnies but more to do with how angels are traditionally quite terrifying looking um, so it will become apparent what I was thinking of later on but let's just say this is more to do with the traditional biblical idea of angels which I suppose has kind of let the cat out of the bag as to what this is going to end up looking like um, I don't really like angels as a theme because they always strike me as a bit brr, a bit goody two shoes, you know. Right, so this is another Posca brush pen. So if you saw I used that in the last concertina page, I think. If I remember correctly. Uh, and I never even knew Posca did brush pens which I've probably already said but uh, the fact that they do is quite funny they're not the easiest things in the world to use I'm not sure if I've in some way done it wrong but they were not I'm still trying to figure out how to use them to my own satisfaction but uh, that's the same with any new media or tool or anything um, what on earth is the hold up here? Ah. Will he move from one thing to another? And just sit in there. Ah, what's this? Ah, yes. So this is watercolour pens. So that'll be the touch 10. Touch 10? Is it touch 10? Uh, they are. Yeah, touch 10 watercolour brushes. Um. I'm trying to sort of really up the watercolourness of them and of course because the uh, grey that I put on the on that side is also watercolour it's slightly I don't know what you call that it's, it's kind of like do you know do you know what a decal edge is where you have like a card or a piece of paper and it's got like sort of roughed up edges it kind of gives it that feel so it's almost like I don't know like they're partially on fire or there's something coming off them because the the dark part sort of contrasts and moves and then you've got the orangey so it's, it, it's a yellowish colour I'm using but it's kind of almost a um, earthy yellow so what do you call that yellow ochre yeah. it's not a colour I use very much but I actually quite like it for this because it looks quite I don't know it gives the impression of yeah see that this is where I'm slightly worried that I'm le I'm, I've got uh, pages underneath I didn't want to get any watercolour through it um, and of course the advantage with the Poscas is they're acrylic so once they once they've actually dried they're permanent um, so it means I don't have to worry about them leaking you know watercolour leaking into that side of it if I'm doing this on the other side um,
You can probably tell that they're not. These are not necessarily angels on the same side. Or well, the wings are from. After all. Uh, Lucifer is an angel, so. It's not uncommon for. Demons to be fallen angels. There's also something to be said for the way human beings. Sorry about that. It appears I trod on my uh, microphone jack just as I was coming to the point of what I was saying, which is about typical. But no, basically, what I'm saying is that. You've got two sides of human nature. You've got the good and the bad. So the exalted and the fallen or whatever you care to call it. Um, I don't know. And the fact that the implication here is that the the angel is falling but the demon is rising is, uh, I don't know, or possibly they're just revolving, which I think is more like most people. You know, you have those moments where you know, you face something and you, your good or, or the good or the bad side of your nature might come to the top at any given moment. Um, which makes it all sound a bit aggressive. But most people are pretty chill. Um, I definitely think that most people tend to be on the. I don't know. They seem to put up with an awful lot of stuff that I wouldn't necessarily put up with. Of course, I say that, but I totally would put up with it. Oh, I had a little bit of technical issue there. Obviously, didn't catch that bit there. But it was basically me using the black, again, Posca brush. Uh, so I've done a lot of work underneath and you can see I'm going over it again uh, with the black but I think that's because I just wanted to have those sort of slightly greasy highlights because I wanted the wings on this side to be very much very dark but I like the idea of them reflecting back something so I'm actually being really cheesy here and actually drawing in ribs and the ribs and stuff of the, the feathers themselves, which is probably not necessary, but and probably why it took so long to do this one. Um, I've sped it up a heck of a lot, but uh, it's still nearly 40 minutes worth of video. So I do apologize if you wanted a, a quick one here. Um, it's going to be relatively long. Not my longest. But uh, probably going down that that conversational route just gets full of innuendo and there we, then where will we be? Oh yeah, you see there, muck up. But hey, I think it was being like um, cinders. Like I looked at it and I was like, do you know what? I don't care. I mean, I do care, but I am not in the mood to worry about it. I kind of wish I had more time to spend on these things. Um, but that, I'm afraid, will be up to how many subscribers we ever get. Although I quite like sharing these things with you all, even if there's only a few of you. After all, it's not the number of subscribers, it's the quality that's the important thing. Although, the cash would be nice too. It's like that thing, isn't it, where you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't need money to buy happiness, but let's be honest, who wouldn't fancy winning the lottery? <laughs> Yeah. And they say money doesn't buy you happiness, but it does mean you can be miserable and comfort. I think there was a comedian said that once. 
I definitely didn't make that one up myself. It's far too pithy. So this is all fairly understandable and reasonable stuff. You know, wingy stuff and floofiness and a bit of fiery looking stuff and what have you. Uh, it's kind of after this that this image kind of gets a bit weird. Um, but then that's kind of my own fault because I put that circle in the middle. Not really knowing what I was going to do with it. Um, I kind of assumed that it would cut to me as I went along um, because I'm very much I, I have a tendency to be a bit like that I'm not one with massive plans I have a tendency to think of making a piece of artwork as Let's see, I've tried to get rid of that and I just made it look worse. Look at that. Disgusting. Why do I worry about such things? Having a bit of a poke at it, throwing things at it. Throwing things at it doesn't help. I can guarantee that throwing your tools down just doesn't help anything get better. Hello, I'm wrapping a new one. Which one's this one? Yeah, this one's a bluey one. This is... Is it a brushy one? Yes, a brushy one, which means that would just be a light blue. <laughs> that's kind of a disappointment, really, because I've got one that's, I think it's called Arctic Blue, but it's not a brush. It's a, just a, one of the thin ones. Oh, no, I lie. I've got another one. It's one of the thin ones. So it's a PC1MR uh, that's Glacier Blue, uh, which is actually quite a nice quite a nice cool blue i find this blue here uh light blue it's kind of it's weirdly poppy in the, in that it pops out blues generally cool colors generally uh do recede and blue is considered a cool color i mean if you don't like blue then it's an uncool color but you know what i mean um so yeah, but this one seems to actually rise above the image rather than recede. Uh, which you do get with some blues, but it's not the conventional. Try again. It's not the conventional wisdom about blue. Um, warm colours are supposed to come forward in the image. Blue colours are supposed to recede, which means that if you are doing something where you want to put some visual depth in if you're not using perspective so if you're just using flat planes as a so for example if you've got like a Bob Ross style thing if you use more bluey colors in the background you'll find that they will naturally generally pale blue so like ones that you've tinted with what do you mean I'm trying to smudge the edge it's my son. It's cute, but you know, here's when you look at something back and you think to yourself, "Oh shit, I should have left it like that." It's kind of what I'm thinking now. Oh, at one point in this one, I put gold on it. I don't know why. Oh yeah. This is not gold, this is bronze. I kind of wanted a sort of shimmer, but I want it to kind of look oily, but it doesn't quite, but it doesn't look right, if you know what I mean. It's got a kind of bruisey looking thing. I suppose I wanted that side to look a bit broken. Although this is where it gets big, because what I did here was I put like a neon yellow as an edge and then there's a brush. I used one of the other brushes, but I can't remember what colour I used. Possibly the gull, which is possibly unforgivable. I do apologise for that. So we've got some green. 
is I know what I'm trying to go for here, but I'm not happy with the way I'm doing it. Or, yeah, I'm just, it's not quite working out for me, mentally speaking. Oh, there you go. See, look, Scribblicious, two pound the works. It's not an advert, but, uh, you know, I like cheap art supplies as much as the next person. Yeah, yeah it was gold, I think. Oh, my goodness. Where did I come with me? Yeah, I spent all this, make all this effort here to do all these edges, which is daft when you see the next thing I'm going to do after this. Because I just was not happy with this. But then again, that's part of doing art. I'm very much a art is the bit of exploration you do when you're going away from your initial idea. After all, if your initial idea is the end of what you're going to do, then there's not really much point in doing it. For me, anyway. A lot of people, they like to know what they're up to, which is fair enough. I appreciate that. And it's glad that people do it, otherwise, you know, nothing will ever get done. You like that? So. I am drawing tiny circles. This is one of the uh, covers from the, the, I don't know what you call it, the button bit at the end of the brush, uh, the brush buskers. Um, oh, and I'm using the pencil I got from the artful box. Um, if you're interested in that video, uh, it's There in the unboxing, uh, yeah, the unboxing. Sorry, I was watching. You know how it's when you watch yourself back and you think to yourself, "Oh, could have done that better." This is okay. This is just fine liner pens and uni pens, which I use quite a lot. This is me trying to make these more defined. So what, rather than being part of a, uh, the background, they're definitely floating above. Which I suppose sort of adds the idea that these wings are actually revolving rather than, rather than going up or down. I, I kind of hope there's a bit of movement in this. I hope you enjoy this. I mean, this is all designed to be calming, I think. You'll have to let me know if it is or not. I want to do these ones without music because sometimes it's overstimulating if you have the music as well. You can't really concentrate on what people are saying. Not that you necessarily want to concentrate on what I'm saying. But if you did then it would be annoying. I mean, I'm reasonably neurotypical, but even I get to a point where it's like, do you know what? I can't stand the music on things. And quite often I'll turn the sound off entirely. When it, if it's just... I mean, to be fair, you, you could quite easily turn off my speaking. And that would be quite understandable. <laughs> You can see these are becoming, these aren't just circles, these are sort of eyeballs. If you know anything about, this is probably not the right kind of angel actually for these, well, for what is emerging as the theme, but I just think as a, an image, the idea of a a ring of eyes is quite striking. And you know, in in the Museum of Bad Art, there is a whole section that's just eyes. These aren't supposed to be particularly realistic eyes, so you know, I don't. 
I'm not fussed about being a judge on these because they're sort of the impression of eyes rather than actual eye eyes. Although I quite like the fact that I've got the background there, which means that each eye is slightly different. So it has a slightly different iris. Um, I feel that I should have made more brown eyes though. But I'm not sure how I would have done that with the format of the image. I mean, speaking to someone with brown eyes. Yeah. Or green eyes or grey eyes. But not violet eyes because only anime girls have those. And anime boys sometimes. IRL anyway. Well, at least I've never seen a real person with violet eyes. Maybe there are real people with violet eyes. I don't know. It's a nice idea. I was kind of wanting green eyes, you know, like the proper green, green eyes, not just like with a tint of green. I mean, I do have a couple of little spots of green in my eyes, but they're not really green, green. I have more golden colours in my eyes than I do have green. But mainly brown. Dark brown. actually the only woman in my family who got brown eyes which is weird but then my dad had brown eyes so I suppose that's not really surprising oh yeah I'm trying to put a bit more I think I'm going for something trying to make it look like there's rivers it's kind of like the earth but not the earth Maybe it's a, a sort of dodgy representation of Pa Pangaea or something like that. Pangaea? Is it Pangaea or Pangaea? Pangaea? You know when all the continents were just one big continent? That. That's me trying to smudge the paint intentionally. Or smudge the pen lines. Because too much accuracy is a nuisance. And if you've been watching something like The Century of the Image, you know that it doesn't have to be accurate to be accurate. If that makes sense. Perfection is not key here. A strong impression. Yeah. Whites the eyes. Well, it's been a long day today. Sorry if I'm yawning. I'm not bored with this. I find it quite interesting actually. Which is weird because I did this myself, so you would have thought it'd be less interesting, but it's kind of you know when you're doing it, you're so in it, you don't really see what you're doing. You know, it's almost like your focus is just the end of the paintbrush or the end of the pencil or, or you know. It's not actually you can't see the whole image emerging. So it's quite interesting for me to watch this. I think I'd probably recommend this for a lot of artists is actually watching themselves do stuff. Although not that artists need to be any more self-focused than they actually are. I mean, we're all a bit gyroscopic in our ways. I.e. we revolve around ourselves, just in case you're uncertain what I meant. don't mean to be it's just kind of when you live that much in your own head it's sort of it's, it's almost like an occupational hazard 
even when you're trying to look outside yourself, you always look like in your own head when you're doing. <laughs> oh dear. This is where I'm trying to make it look like I've done this intentionally. I don't know why I did that. I need some highlights because you can't have an eye without highlights. Well, I think I may have just given them or each their own highlight rather than actually made it relative to wherever the light may be coming from. But then it's kind of an illustration rather than a. I'm not trying to be realistic here. So, yeah, in case you didn't guess this is a not 100% accurate representation of a biblical angel in this case a throne uh, which is basically a big big ass ring with eyes I think it's two rings with eyes I don't know but there are a lot of angels with too many eyes it's like seraphim None of that naked babies flying around. It's it's all, um, it's all like excessive numbers of wings and eyes in the wings and then eyes in the palms and eyes here and eyes there. There's the ones that are, I think they're made of molten gold or something. I don't, I can't remember what those ones are called. As I say, this is all research my daughter did. She likes researching strange things. It's quite interesting that. As atheists, we appreciate this sort of Christian symbology. I suppose living in Western culture, that's kind of the one we feel most comfortable with. Oh, I think I'm nearly done, actually. Yay, I'm finished. You can escape now. Thank you for watching with me.